This is your Barbados Today Morning News Update for Monday, December the 10th. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news at this hour, the tributes continue to flow in following the death of leading local theatre actress and dramatist Andrea Gollop Greenwich. Minister of Culture and the Creative Economy John King said last night that her passing was a sad day for the arts. As most people would know, Andrea would have been a staple in theatre. She also would have worked at the NCF for a number of years and was responsible for a number of programs that were undertaken by the NCF at the time that she was there. And so I guess I could say this not only on behalf of the ministry, the NCF, but on behalf of all the people in Barbados who would have enjoyed her work over the years. Uh, condolences to her family. And uh, I would just like to say on a more personal note to them, to be strong and uh, know that everyone is rooting for them in their time of grief. In paying tribute, Prime Minister Mia Motley said that for generations, Andrea Gollop symbolized all things authentically Bajan in the performing arts, especially theatre, and she thanked her for her devotion to theatre and to Barbados. In other news now, the Royal Barbados Police Force has taken action to prevent dozens of guns from falling into the wrong hands. In adherence to the international protocol, officers on Sunday destroyed more than 120 firearms in keeping with the UN Convention that requires member states like Barbados to adopt measures to prevent illegal firearms from falling into the hands of unauthorized persons by seizing and destroying such weapons. Acting Police Public Relations Officer Sergeant Michael Blackman told reporters that 102 of the guns are the property of the force, having been used to train recruits. We are destroying uh, point, I mean, 303 rifles, 102 of them, which are the property of the police force, together with some .38 revolvers, approximately 23, and other firearms that come into police custody and storage over, over the time. The Prison Officers Association of Barbados is pulling out of the Umbrella Trade Union body. The association has agreed to follow the advice of its industry relations consultant, Senator Caswell Franklin, and sever all ties with the Congress of Trade Unions and Staff Associations of Barbados. Franklin said the decision was prompted by last week's arrest and charge of Prison Office Association President Trevor Brown on four charges where he is accused of inciting other officers to stage a stakeout. Franklin fears that any links to a trade union body at this stage could rub the proverbial salt into the wounds of Brown's situation. I have advised the Prison Office Association that since they have taken action against Brown for allegedly trying to influence people away from their duties, that we must, they must be careful in how they proceed, and that in accordance with the law, they are not even supposed to be associated with their union. And that could be the next charge. So they have decided that until such time as these matters are settled in the courts, or the Parliament revoked the President Office, the amendment to the President Office Act, the 1982 amendment, that they will stay away from any association with the unions up to and including C2 Sam. It is not a permanent situation, it is a situation where they will are protecting themselves from any further criminal action because we don't know what the government and prison authorities are doing because since the formation of C2 Sam in 1992, the government has sit down with members of the Prison Officers Association as part of a delegation of C2SAB and negotiated with them. The government is negotiating with them in one state as trade unions, and when they, act, when they think that they act as trade unions in another, they decide they're going to bring criminal charges. You can't have both. The Barbados Tourism product has received a major boost with the opening of the Virgin Holidays Departure Beach Lounge at the Copacabana Bay Street. The investment, which is upwards of $1 million, is a three-way between Virgin Holidays, Coca Cabana, and the Sun Group. The departure beach provides a new experience for Virgin travelers 
who want to eliminate the wait time at the airport. It provides an avenue for travelers to check in and collect their boarding passes before making their way to spend the last few hours of their vacation soaking up the sun and spending time on the beach. Welcoming the investment, Minister of Tourism Kerry Simmons said Barbados was blessed to have the first ever Virgin Holidays Departure Beach launch. This is a glorious innovation and I am happy to be able to tell you that we already have, I'm told, 5,000 bookings for next year and this is day one. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is this kind of partnership that is working for Barbados. And it is because of this type of partnership, as Richard just said, we are now having 11 flights. He said weekly. I wish it was weekly, but it is. Sorry, he said daily. I wish it was daily, but it is weekly. 11 flights daily um, from Gatwick, Manchester, and Tuesday we'll begin our flight twice weekly from Heathrow. And it is this type of partnership that allows Virgin today to be representative of 42% of the traffic coming into Barbados from the United Kingdom. Founder of Virgin Group Limited, Sir Richard Branson, said he was proud of the work of the Virgin Holidays Company, which he acknowledged had managed to increase flights to Barbados since its introduction some two decades ago. Our holidays company have done fantastic. I mean, they, um, I think, send more people to the Caribbean than any other holiday company in the world. Um, and um, I'm really, really proud of what they've managed to achieve um, since they set up many, many years ago. Um, I think a, a, a place like this is just the kind of thing that Virgin would do and should do all the time, always innovating, always creating something extra special for um, the people who love the Virgin brand. There's regional and international news after this short break. Back with news from the region now. The Ghana government is considering the introduction of alternatives to jail time for drug-related offenses. Director of the National Anti-Narcotics Agency, retired Major General Michael Affley, argues that alternatives to putting such offenders behind bars offer a positive way to collectively address the consequences of the strong connection between drug use, crime, and imprisonment. Further, the high financial and other costs of our prison system make it vital that we seriously undertake alternatives to incarceration as a less costly and more effective system. And on the international scene, Democratic lawmakers said on Sunday that U.S. President Donald Trump could face impeachment and jail time if hush money payments reported by his former lawyer are proven to be campaign finance violations. The criminal probe into Donald Trump's former lawyer could follow and even ensnare the president after he leaves office, according to a top Democrat. My takeaway is there's a very real prospect that uh, on the day Donald Trump leaves office, the Justice Department uh, may indict him, uh, that he may be the first president uh, in quite some time to face the real prospect of jail time. Incoming House Intelligence Committee Chair Adam Schiff mincing no words when asked on CBS's Face the Nation Sunday about bombshell developments in the Cohen case last week. Federal prosecutors outlining their belief that then-presidential candidate Trump, described as individual one in court filings, instructed Cohen to pay hush money to porn star Stormy Daniels and another woman who claimed to have had affairs with Trump. Those payments coming in the run-up to the 2016 election. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We are also on Izumi Media Inbus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Now you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. 
Have a fantastic day.